Hi everyone, it's Leslie from Well 12 Vinyl, and I am coming to you today for Tutorial Tuesdays. Today we will be doing uh, sports bras and boxer shorts using a stabilizer board. The purpose for the stabilizer board is for those items that are larger than your press. Um, they can be a little bit intimidating, a little bit harder to press and hence we use a stabilizer board. This is just a thin piece of board and I will explain a little bit more when we move over to the press um, what this is, but it's just a board that you can use on your larger items to move them around under your press without disrupting your design or your papers, which can sometimes create that ghosting and those undesired effects. Um, I have a 16 by 24 press, so um, truly on this design, I wouldn't need to do um, a stabilizer board, but for instance, um, the new men's boxers that Silkies has put out are longer, and so they, they require a stabilizer board, at least in my press, to work. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I wanted to walk you through what that looked like. So, um, I also have a 13 by 19 ET um, 5000 printer, and it only prints up to 15 by 9 or 13, excuse me, by 19 inches. So, I needed to split my design. I will be posting a tutorial on my YouTube as well as in my Facebook group about splitting designs in Photoshop, Affinity, and um, Silhouette. Um, but I saved for the sake of time tonight. We won't go into all of that. Um, what I did want to show you is taping the designs back together after you have split them and printed them. Um, so if you look, I always tend to create this ledge on my design. Um, you could see where I've split the design in my software, whichever one you use. But then when I cut it out, I leave a ledge on one side. So on this side I left my ledge. On this side I cut flush with the design splice. Um, and now I'm going to show you what it looks like to take them back together. So I'll go ahead and adjust so you can see my workspace. And on this I have not found uh, it necessary to use heat tape. You could use heat tape, however I am just using regular scotch tape. <laughs> And I just take a piece of tape, yay long, it's probably a little long for what I needed for this. And then I just go half on the design, half on, half off of the design. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim the extra because I got a little overzealous clearly with my taping. This is a really good option for any of your bigger designs. You guys have seen this, me do this over and over with my doormats. Um, there's a lot of designs that I like to splice because I like that big full image. I do a lot of full bead items, and this is how I am able to do that. And I printed out two of the same items. So hang on one second. We'll hurry and print out that second item. Here, I thought I was so prepared and see what it got me. So if, while that's printing, let's talk a little bit about print, print settings. So everybody kind of has a different idea of what print settings should look like. Everybody has their own opinion. So I guess one thing that I want you to get out of every tutorial I do is that my way is not necessarily the right way. It works for me. Um, I have found that that changing the print settings isn't um, doesn't create the best the best results for me. Um, I tend to use three inks. Um, I will be honest; I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm not convinced that it's the ink that makes all the difference. There are some really good inks out there. I tend to stay with um, DBG Print Shop, driven by Graphics Ink, ColourPop. Um, are the two, if I'm going to buy the more expensive inks, those are the two that I tend to gravitate toward. Um, but I'll be honest, I've used tr uh, Printer's Jack and never had any problems with it. Now the paper's a different option, or a different 
ball game altogether, I have found that paper makes a big difference in the results of your sublimation. And so um, I really like, I've always, always used text printer HP um, or um, I really like single J's paper. Um, but find a paper that works for you and go with it. That's the important thing is, like I said, the things that I use I can recommend, um, but find what works for you and helps drive your business and create success for you and go with it. Um, the printer settings. I always stay with Epson Vivid. Um, it hasn't, hasn't steered me wrong yet, so I don't mess with putting in ICC profiles, any of that. Um, there are many people in the industry that would disagree with that, and that's okay. Um, that If that works for them to do that, then by all means do it. If it works for you, for me, it just hasn't been beneficial. The one thing that is very beneficial is changing the quality of your print to slow. Um, then you avoid those pizza woes, you avoid some of those things that can happen when you're printing at a fast um, rate of speed. So um, that's kind of what I've learned um, in my years of sublimation. I will be using for tonight's tutorial, I will be using uh, silky, um, silky socks um, blanks. I have, if you have not checked out the website, site, please do so. I have no affiliation with, with Silky. Um, I started using their product about two, three years ago. Um, I was asked by my colleagues to create some socks for them. And um, I was brand new to doing socks and whatnot. So I looked up a few YouTube videos and went and got some socks set at Walmart and created my own jigs and the whole nine yards. And then I found Silky Socks. And I will tell you that it is an amazing product. I haven't looked back and that is my go-to for socks. And now boxers and sports bras do really, really well in my area. And so that it's become a very, very much a staple in my business. So I'm just going to hurry and cut this out real quick. I apologize for not having this ready. I thought I was all prepared. And like I said, in cutting this, I'm going to do flush with the design on this one. I left my ledge on the other side, but one of them put a ledge on. It just makes it a little bit easier for your paper not to shift and just makes it a little bit better. And this will become, like I said, I use this on all of my, all of my designs. I use it on, or all of my doormat designs. I always am splitting my images and it will become second hand to you. I know a lot of people get intimidated by that, but it will become easier and easier the more you do it. So I like to, or some people like to find the, the widest area of their design. I actually like to cut right through a very well printed area of my design. For me, it's a little bit easier to line up. Obviously with this design, it's an all over full bleed. So you're not gonna have any area that's um, that you're not going to have to line up. But for me, it's a lot easier to line them up when I have more to work with. So sometimes still I have to untape it and do it again, but it becomes easier and easier the more you do it, just like anything else. Um, so there's my finished design. We're going to go ahead and move over to the press. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, I have struggled a little bit with the stabilizer board and these particular blanks. Um, but for the larger items, um, it's, it's all about getting the pressure. I have the correct pressure and it's a fine line with these. I have found, and I think I have a theory as to why this happens. I think adding that extra board on the bottom creates more of a pressure board than if you're just 
pressing on your mat that has a little bit more cushion, a little bit more forgiving of those pressure changes from the back, particularly in the sports bra, from the back, backing of the sports bra. Um, I will show you what I mean. Let me see if I can find another blank. I've got mine prepped to go under the machine, but if you can see, you've got this backing here. I haven't had a problem at all when I'm just pressing one item on my normal mat, but like I said, I think adding the, the firm board underneath it creates more of a pressure thing. So I'll let you just show you what I've done to work around that. Um, and let's hurry and talk about the press just a little bit. So I'm going to be using a clamshell press today. Um, I have a swing away and a clamshell. This is a 16 by 24, but I started out with a 15 by 15. So I get group members texting me or messaging me all the time saying, well, I can't do that because I only have a 15 by 15. I don't want you to limit yourselves. Yes, there are a few extra steps when you have a smaller press, but if it is unattainable for you to get a, a bigger press right now, I don't want you to limit yourself to what you can do because of that press. So um, this is a good way around that. Um, I have found, so with these clamshell presses, your, it, it, just like it sounds like, it looks like a clam. So all of your pressure is at the back here. So if you have a thick board, you're going to have a lot of pressure back here, very little pressure up here. It's gonna be very uneven. You're gonna get that marbling effect. Um, it's not gonna look the way you want it to look. Um, I have found a board. And if you look at this, I can figure out my stupid camera. This is about an eighth of an inch thick. Very, very thin. It basically is um, uncoated MDF board. So it's got a special name that I don't remember what it is, but, um, it's basically like your hardboard blanks that you get. It is the same idea. Very thin. It does allow you to get even pressure from front to back. Um, so to prep for this, first of all, we are going to put a paper down to protect. We want to protect the board because in the future I'll be using this board again and what I don't want to happen is I don't want um, off gassing to leave ink on the board and then it to transfer to another item the next time I press and then we put our our blank on so like I said I've done this multiple times now and what I run into is having that um, Having that create um, uneven pressure right where those straps hit. So what I did is I cut up a piece of um, this little tiny towel. Let me grab another one so you can see it. So I didn't have a pressing pillow that was big enough. So my pressing pillows would come to about here. But then this is going to hang off and create uneven pressure on the sides. So what I did is this is one of the Dollar Tree really cheap um, towels that they have. It's a dollar. So I got one of those, cut it the same length as the blank. And we're going to give that a shot and see if that helps even out that pressure. Like I said, I don't ever notice a problem when I am doing um, when I'm doing it just on the regular mat, just when I added that hardboard. So I want to see if this is going to resolve that barrier. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. So again, I am going to protect my investment and always have a face or a top sheet over it. I am pre-pressing my garment and there are two reasons for that. The first, well, there's actually three reasons. This is a time to adjust your pressure. I have pre-adjusted my pressure, but this is a really good time before you get your design involved um, to check your pressure, make sure it's what it needs to be. 
With these, it's a fine line. Um, I would say medium pressure on these. Um, but it also removes all of the, it removes all of the moisture from the garment. And then which is, which is the reason we pre-press all of you should be pre-pressing all of your fabric type um, lengths because that if there's pre if there's um, if you're doing shirts if you're doing fabrics if there's moisture in the material then it will cause that marbling that you see all right and then on the front i'm going to go ahead and add these because this goes at a 45 degree angle and so i want to protect and make sure that it's not going to bleed through onto the back of the bra and sometimes you have to make some adjustments in the straps and get them to lay. What I'm trying to do is even out some of this here. And make sure everything is covered. I said this is a full bleed design. So I want everything covered. So if you see when this shut, when this comes down, it's gonna hit right here. So I may not get the desired um, pressure all the way. I find that about the last half an inch can be a little bit spotty on the pressure, particularly with the board. And so that is where the board comes into play. So I'm going to go ahead and go for 30 seconds, 30 to 40 seconds. I'm not going to do the full 60 because I'm going to turn it around and come at it again from the other side and I don't want to burn the fabric. So we're going to go for about uh, 40 seconds, then we'll turn it around and look and see how it looks. Like I said, this one has been a little bit of a trial and error for me. But those of you, as you get to know me a little bit better, you find I don't give up too easily. And it really bothers me when I can't figure something out. So this is the sixth or seventh time I've tried this. So we're hoping for a win on this. I'd really love to be able to figure this out. So I, I really want, I'm really itching to do those leggings, but I want to get this figured out before. All right, so we're gonna very carefully, and this is what I love about this board, is that I can move my entire item without disturbing my design. Now, ideally, I would have cut that that part on the end off so that that wouldn't be, and you know, I, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but it makes it a little bit easier. Oh, perfect. And I can already see that that towel, so far I'm not seeing any marbling that I was seeing on every other all the other tries, I was getting marbling through it. And I believe it was because of the board and the back straps and the uneven pressure, but I don't see that on this one. So we're gonna hope for the best. And then we're gonna flip it over and do the back the same way. So I'm just going to lift up lightly. Yes, I don't see the marbling. And that pressed beautifully. So that is what I will be continuing to do on these um, to avoid that pressure gap because that looks absolutely beautiful. I couldn't be happier with that. So there's the front. Now we're going to just get set up to do the back. So I'm going to change out my paper.
And I am just going to flip this whole thing over and put another paper up to cover this side. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to adjust this a little bit so that almost like with your socks, so that there's a little bit, so you're kind of rolling it up so that you get, make sure that you're getting everything. And I do this whether I'm doing the board or not. I do this on the regular ones as well, just to make sure that there's not a gap. But I am gonna slide a piece of paper up in this side so that I protect, because they're cheap, but I really would rather not buy new papers every single time. Or new, I'm sorry, new towels every single time I need to press one. And like I said, the only time I use the towel is when I'm doing the using the stabilizer board, just strictly because um, of the pressure. But that seemed to have fixed it, so there's the workaround for that. Just a hair. Just so not to, it probably wouldn't be an issue, but just so not to create an uneven pressure barrier there. And the other thing I'm going to do is fix this so I don't have to go with this when I'm flipping my board around. Just so the off chance it doesn't and I'm probably overkill on this, but I've done designs before where I didn't put that in there. And it just didn't look as finished and as nice. So I probably am a little bit type A about that. All right, we're ready to go with round two. And one thing I would like to share with you guys is that I have found I am the least patient person in the entire world. And But I have found that taking those few extra minutes to make sure everything's aligned and everything looks good is a game changer. It will save you much frustration. It will make your project look better. Your, pay, your customers will know. Um, and they'll be able to see that and respect the difference. So I would just suggest and um, encourage you to take that extra few minutes to make those small adjustments, even though they, it takes a little bit more time because there will be a big difference in your final product. So again, the things that I'm using, I just got the board from Home Depot. Um, this paper, this blowout paper, you can get rolls, um, quite large rolls from um, Costco, Sam's Club. I really like the pre-packaged. It's just packaging paper. I just get a pack from Walmart and um, it comes with 200 pieces in it. It's 24 inches by 24 inches. That works really well for me. But um, a lot of people like the really big rolls. You can get the roll dispenser from Amazon and that works really well for a lot of people. So again, I love the board in that I can move my design around and I don't have to stress and worry about ghosting, all of that stuff. So if I had a longer item, like um, dish towels, some of the dish towels that you're doing the full bleed on, 
all I would do is move the board from left to right. Um, for me, I just needed that extra, um, that extra at the top and the bottom. But you can see how beneficial having a board like this will be in your final product. And it makes it so that you can do those bigger projects regardless if you have a 15 by 15, 9 by 12. Yes, is it ideal? No. But it, it can, it, don't let it stop you from reaching your dream. Use that 9 by 12 or 15 by 15 and save up to get your next machine. So one thing I also like to mention when I'm heat pressing anything um, is to know your machines. Know uh, if they run hot, if they run cold. All right. And again, that's just released. And I wish, let me see if I can find. Let me see if I can show you the difference with the board versus without the board. Or I'm sorry, with the towel in between versus not the towel in between. So you can see right where that pressure is uneven. You can see the marbling there. Um, for me, that's not an acceptable item to send out to a customer. So um, I'm really glad this worked. It's a good workaround for this. Let me pull all of this packing out. And you can see just how pretty that turned out. Looks really, really good. So now let's do the, the boxers to match. So you could do the exact same thing with the boxers. However, for sake of time, I am not going to do that because the boxers will fit comfortably on my press. So you could reuse the towel. It's a dollar, so I'm not going to worry about it. But you could. You could reuse the towel. Just make sure you have a paper over it to protect your item from that. And then the other thing, make sure that you don't leave your board on your press. It will warp. The heat will warp it if it lays. You know, it's a lot longer than the press, so if it lays, it's going to warp. So don't, don't leave it on there. All right, so now we're going to do the boxer shorts that go along with this. And what I have been told and what I have found myself is that the boxers seem to run a size too small, um, or a size smaller than the stated. I've had customers tell me that and most of the time when customers buy, um, the customers that have bought these in the past, the next time they order, they order a size up. Um, for me, it, they were just a little bit more comfortable, um, a size bigger. But the sports bras are very true to size. Um, but I would, hi I would suggest your customers order a size up on the boy shorts. But they're so comfortable, you guys. And the socks, I told um, a friend of mine that I'm in trouble because I tried, I, I just never worn the socks. And I made the mistake of wearing them. And they are so dang comfortable. But now I find myself buying them just for me. So again, with the boxers, um, you want to protect the leg, the leg band, the insides of the legs and the waistband from transferring ink. So I just create a little piece of paper that I can slide in there.
to protect that so there's not, so that it just looks a little bit more finished and classy. I am going to start with the back first. I know it seems silly, but for some reason that is my preference when I do the boxes. So on the back, it's just a pretty simple design, so I don't have to worry as much about placement. I do on the front. The front design has a side design that needs to be placed strategically. So we'll take a little bit more time with that. But on the back, we don't have to worry as much. So, like I was saying in the first one, if I was doing one press, one item, I'm not using a board, I'm not going to be pressing it multiple times, I will do the full 50 to 60 seconds on each side. But, um, like on the sports bra where I'm doing multiple um, presses on the same side, I'm going to reduce the time so as not to burn the blank. You don't see it as much in this, but you can see it particularly in the doormats. Um, if they're under there too long, they take on a kind of a reddish tint. So you can tell when they've been burned. So keep an eye on your blanks. Again, know your equipment. I've got mine set for 385 because I know that my press runs hot. I, I really don't, I wouldn't go up. I would do like 360, between 360 and 385 on your press. I don't think you need to go super, super hot. But you can see how pretty that press is. And this is why I love silky socks because they are um, consistent. I get consistently good results with them every time I use them. And that is so very important to me. Um, and important to my clientele, I don't want to spend money on a bunch. You guys know blanks aren't, aren't cheap. And so I don't want to spend a ton of money on blanks and then kind of get them in blanks. And you will not get that with soapy socks. Um, those that are in my group know that I will never suggest a company unless I have used the product personally and had good success with. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do the other side. So I don't know if you guys got it good, but you can see how pretty that and how even that pressed. It does have a gradient, so it goes from dark blue at the bottom to very, very light blue, almost white at the top. So the design comes from me. Um, you can find it on my Etsy page, which is um, Wall to Wall Vinyl on Etsy or on Shopify. And um, I appreciate you checking into that. And again, the blanks that I am using come from Silky Socks. Really great product.
please make sure if you're watching this from YouTube, please join my Facebook group, which is Wall to Wall Vinyl on, on Facebook. I'm also on TikTok, on Instagram, and I would love to have you follow me. And then if you are watching from Facebook, please go and join, um, join me on YouTube. Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok. That would be greatly appreciated. So, and again, I know it seems a little bit cumbersome to take all these extra steps, and trust me, I'm the least patient person on the planet, but it really does make a difference in the final appearance of your, of your blank. It's worth the extra time. So, this is the one that you kind of need to make sure. You can see it has this saying on the side, so you need to be a little bit more careful where you place it. And I've tried to adjust for that in my designs because I want you to be able to get a really good full bleed without having to stress and worry too much about that. Um, but just make sure it's not falling off the design and that it looks good. But I do try with my garden flags, with anything that's full bleed, I try to envision it like I would if I were pressing it so to make it as easy as possible for you guys when you get the design. Got just a couple seconds here and we'll finish this out. And this will be a matching set. What I have found works really well in my areas is people really want, people really want, um, people really want to see People really like to have the full, they, they really like to have full um, sets. So that's what I've tried to accomplish with, with these is, so most of my um, boxer socks sets come with boxers, a set of boxers, um, socks, and, and a sports bra, because that's what works really well in my area. In just a second, I'm gonna let that cool off and then and then I will show you the finished product, but it's super hot. Okay, so that's how they finished out. Um, this is the back of them. And another great um, another great outcome from Silky Socks. I hope this tutorial has been beneficial and please join me for the next one. Have a great night.